Clay, can you take us through two different stretches of your game in the first half with your scoring explosion and then to open the fourth quarter, how are you approaching those things without Stefan Durant? Uh, the ball was just finding me. I didn't do anything special. I was just getting open and um, knocking down shots, playing in a good rhythm. So you see a few go in, and then all you need is a little space. But I'll uh, give credit to my teammates. I got a lot of, a lot of good shots off uh, offensive rebounds and all shots within the offense. So it's not like I was doing anything. Just more volume, but nothing I don't do usually. Just try to get open and shoot that shot. This is that early start game in L.A. How locked in were you guys trying to just be ready for this early on? Oh, we, um, well, we have our eyes on the, you know, other teams playing, and we see an, um, Houston being up 3-0, chance to close it out. We didn't want to extend this series any longer because we know how grueling the playoffs can be. We already let one slip away, so tonight we came in with that mindset to, you know, put our, you know, foot on the throttle and not let go. Because we let go on game two, and we won't do that again the rest of the playoffs. I really believe that. Uh, TBJ of Hoops and Brews. Uh, Clay, um, when you're in those situations where you get hot in the first half, um, I believe you had 25 in the first half, uh, what's your mentality going into the second half? Is it more so to continue to play within the flow, or is it to kind of just be a little bit more aggressive? Yeah, that's definitely the, the former, just play within the flow. I'm not good when I'm forcing the forcing shots up. That's not my game. I got to work off my teammates. I got to play within the offense that Steve has, you know, laid out, which has been great for us. I mean, since he's been here. And um, yeah, when I play within that flow, that's when I have huge nights. Not just trying to go out there and hunt for great shots, but not settle for you know contested looks, just because I've made a lot of shots in the first half. But to be patient and and we're on the defense, let my other teammates get involved as well. Clay, I assume you're referring to, to Houston going up 3-0, right? Was that part of the decision to just move practice early yesterday? Was that I mean, you, It's not often you see an NBA team wanting to practice at like 9 a.m. on a Saturday. I don't think so. I actually believe we had the 9 a.m. start time to get us ready for the day. I'm not a morning person, so uh, it was a struggle to get up and practice that early. I felt like I was back at Santa Margarita. But... Um, <laughs> It was fun, man. Anytime I'm playing at Staples, I really enjoy it. And especially, I was so lucky as a kid to come here and watch playoff games, not be a part of it. Uh, it's a real joy for, joy for me. Clay, Chris with the Fantasy Sports Gate. Uh, can you talk about the impact Steph had, even though he didn't shoot the ball that well? Can you talk about his impact on the floor with, along with you guys? He still stuffs the stat sheet. I, I think he had close to 10 rebounds, played, made some great passes, had timely steals. And he did make some huge shots for us when we had nothing going on the offensive end. That step back on the left wing was a huge igniter for our offense. And even when he's not shooting well, we still trust him to take the any shot he takes. I mean, he's proved it with his uh, his career and his track record. You know, greatest shooter, scorer, one of them all time. Hey, Clay, what do you think Alfonso has shown you these first few playoff games? Oh, man, his ability to rebound at the two-guard spot is huge for us. He creates so many extra possessions. He made a huge floater tonight, some big, big putbacks, and he's what a season he's had. To go from Luxembourg to playing in the NBA playoffs for the defending champs, it's an amazing story, and he deserves it because he works so hard. Monty Poole, NBC Sports Bay Area. Steve was in here earlier, and he said that when you go on one of those runs, it's like the whole team feeds off of it. The bench gets livelier and everything. Do you sense that? Do you see that? Do you feel that? I definitely feel it. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I've been in that position, too, on the bench. When I see Steph or KD go off, it's the same thing. But, um, I mean, it feels good to get your teammates up. That's what you play for. You do it together. And I can definitely feel it when, you know, I got it going. Uh, Connor Letourneau, San Francisco Chronicle. Uh, Clay, whenever you feel like you have a bad game, I know you kind of try to, you know, do something to get yourself going. Did you do anything the past couple days to get yourself going tonight? Oh, man, I did a couple things. I didn't think I had a bad games, but I didn't have any big games. I told Jonas yesterday, we went to the beach, played some volleyball. I'm like, yo, I'm just going to go jump in the ocean. I just know that will reset my mind, and it worked. So I don't know if I'm going to jump up north because it's freezing, but something I'll definitely contemplate if I don't shoot the ball that well the rest of the year. But hopefully that doesn't happen. Gary George, Inland Valley News. Clay, talk about the 
momentum you guys took to overtake the Clippers when they had, a, I think, a five-point lead. You guys came out very tenacious and took the lead back. Yeah. We're lucky. We have a lot of experience, and it's not the, not the first time we've been down, you know, going into a fourth quarter, up, up in the series or down in the series. So we know just to play a poise, patience, and play together. If we do those three things, um, we're almost unstoppable, especially when we're locked in mentally. So we weren't that worried. You know, we know they're a good team. They got some great scores. They're going to make a run. You just can't let it deflate you. Thank you, Clyde.